Okay, good morning and welcome. Uh, hope you can all see and hear clearly those especially online students. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's uh, pray and get start. Let's get started. Uh, let okay, I'll lead us in a word of prayer. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and uh, thank you, Lord, for the way in which you've carried us thus far. Father, we ask you for your strength, Lord, to uh, Lord continue to walk with you in this new week. Father, we ask for your blessings. We thank you for the classes we have at Bible College. We pray, God, that um, uh, everything we learn, Lord, will, will equip us to uh, know you well and to serve you well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been talking about um, testing and interpreting personal prophecies. And we said there is a process. God speaks to us, but we have to also interpret and then the message has to be given out clearly. So we are looking at the process. We understood with regard to revelation, how God speaks to us. So that is revelation. That's understood. Then, of course, there is uh, presentation. Okay, so presentation is the way we present it. So we can have uh, self-control. We can decide how we want to share the prophetic word. That comes under presentation. Last class, we were talking about interpretation. And we said that though we may get a word from the Lord, to rightly identify the meaning of that word needs some practice. And... Uh, even a single picture can have so many meanings. But the right interpretation is what will lead to the right application. So we have to do our best to present the right interpretation. So that's where we were at. Today, we will look at application, timing, and confirmation. So uh, let's go. Okay, so we saw how the image has to be interpreted correctly. Now, once it is interpreted correctly, um, it has to be applied into somebody's walk with the Lord, somebody's life. So for that, we have to ensure that the word has to be a genuine word from the Lord. And there are two tests that um, uh, and for that we have to test the prophetic word isn't it to ensure that it's a genuine word from the lord here in our notes on page 179 there is a scripture from there's a passage from first thessalonians chapter 5 verses 20 and 21 if anybody is there could you kindly read it out for us first thessalonians 5 20 and 21 Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Okay, great. So we are encouraged here to not despise prophecies. Despise means to not um, to not regard them. Okay. So when that's the case, when we don't regard prophecies, when can that happen? When when is it that we don't want to regard prophecies? Maybe because we don't understand what prophecy is all about, the power of the prophetic word, or uh, we've had a bad experience of some sort. You know, we've heard certain things that we are not happy about. Then we don't want the prophetic. We feel like, oh, my life is better off without the prophetic. So these are the instances when one may despise or disregard the prophetic word. Somebody said something, leave it. But what does scripture say? Do not despise prophecies. So no matter what we have experienced with regard to the prophetic, God's power and God's way of working in our lives must be honored. So, okay, I don't agree with the prophetic word, but that doesn't mean I should disregard it, isn't it? So put it on the shelf. Maybe it's not a genuine prophetic word, but we'll know. We'll, we'll find out. 
but whenever somebody gives a prophetic word a good thing to do like see sometimes we know clear cut it's not at all prophetic that you leave it but if you feel like yeah this person has heard from the lord say thank you and receive it now maybe some parts of the prophetic word are not accurate we'll find out but at least regard it thank you okay let's take it we'll pray about it we'll confirm we'll see the confirmation later so do not despise prophecies unfortunately this happens people disregard the prophetic uh you know because of certain experiences and all that but that's what the scripture says do not despise prophecies and test all things hold fast what is good so it is our responsibility to test out the prophetic word whether it is accurate or it is not accurate so how can we come to know whether a prophetic word is from the lord or not we've said the main test is the word of god is it aligned if it is very off the word of god then do not receive it i mean there are so many words that can be uh, that are spoken uh, which are so strange like they have no connection to the bible you know uh, so in those times it's fairly simple it's very easy we can just say no it does not align to the word of god so i'm not going to take it up okay <laughs> and uh, secondly ask the question does the prophecy move me towards god and his will for my life or is it taking me away from god so there can be a lot of good words for example uh, you know god is going to bless you god is going to make you very rich right who doesn't like prophecies like that obviously anyone tells you like that you'll be like amen praise the lord you know we want it uh, but ask the question is the prophetic word trying to um, you know make me feel good about it's all about me like okay you will be great you will be a great minister you will be rich you will be blessed but what about god like okay if i am going to minister it should be for the glory of god so you know we always say this in any of our dreams ask the question who is the hero okay so if i am the hero like if i am like oh i am going to be this great uh, wonderful woman of god man of god then we really have to test it further because ultimately even in whatever we do who is supposed to get the glory god should get the glory even in our ministry in everything so if god is the center of the prophetic word if god is the center of that dream and it's all about the glory of god then it is from the lord okay so these are the questions we have to ask so when the prophet said things like this who is it exalting is it exalting me is it exalting christ so that's another question we must ask now check with the witness inner witness of the holy spirit in our hearts see the holy spirit is a gentle spirit and uh, he he bears witness to our spirit sometimes the prophetic word can be very uh, you know very unbelievable very unbelievable but even in those times somewhere in your spirit you can think that yeah it's correct what this person is saying is so correct right so look for the inner witness of the holy spirit and when the holy spirit is confirming about that prophetic word we can be very bold that yeah it is from the lord but it's possible that we hear a word from the lord for example just simply i'm saying uh, okay uh, someone's a pastor and uh, prophetic word is coming that you are going to have a <coughs> a big church in uh, uh just this is a random thing okay i'm just saying it uh, you are going to have a great church in south bangalore whereas the pastor could be serving in north bangalore his whole life he is dedicated there and maybe he's already gone past whatever you know many years many decades uh, serving there and that's been his vision all along now the prophetic word is coming that 
your church will be established in south bangalore right now you can wonder maybe in your spirit though it sounds very good you're not having the witness of the spirit like no no i know god is going to help me have a church or a church building but not in south bangalore you know in your spirit that maybe that one part was missed out by the prophetic word so depend on the inner witness of the holy spirit sometimes the word can be so great uh, even then you'll have a witness that it can happen but sometimes the word can come forth and you have a witness that no it's not correct something is off right so always listen to the holy spirit there's nothing wrong with that because we are supposed to judge the prophetic word and then is the prophecy in harmony with the plans and purposes of god for your life so uh, this is similar to the example that i gave us just now imagine your whole life you have served uh, in uh, different ministries of the church never invested in worship ministry okay maybe you and you probably cannot sing very well also but if the prophetic word comes and says that okay god is going to raise you up to be in the worship ministry then it's hard right because your whole life god has taken you in one direction now suddenly the prophetic word is saying there's going to be a big shift in the direction such prophetic words we have to be very careful about because uh it usually god doesn't work like that god usually works along the path that he's been leading us in okay for example you know maybe i'm serving god here in india okay and my vision is for india everything is for india and so after serving for many decades suddenly somebody says god is calling you to egypt he'll shift you to egypt and you will have a ministry there you can actually question pray because it it's very uh, unlikely or unusual for god to suddenly change our direction so drastically okay so when we get prophetic words like that we have to pray and ask god for a confirmation don't immediately act on it then of course are there two or three witnesses two or three witnesses uh, so two or three witnesses meaning for the confirmation of the prophetic word one of course is uh, let's say we have the peace of god in our hearts and second the holy spirit is bearing witness with our spirit that in itself is like a confirmation that god is saying that now over and above <coughs> we may have um a scripture that speaks to us which is inspired and um, that is confirming that this is what god wants or there can be somebody else who comes and they say the same prophetic word okay uh, and uh, uh, so confirmation happens in many different ways but if we have the inner peace from the holy spirit and also the witness of the holy spirit in our spirit it's almost like yeah we we know god is speaking to us so sometimes we don't even have to wait for additional uh confirmations okay there is a scripture second corinthians 13 and verse 1 which says by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established so we need at least two at least two confirmations of the prophetic word now coming to the um, yeah we are already talking about analyzing the word and applying it so if everything is accurate we can actually act on it and now when we are applying the prophetic word what we want to say is that the prophetic word will not reveal everything for example 
you know the prophetic word might say god is going to use you very powerfully in the ministry but that also means that the minister of god has to work hard the minister of god has to walk in wisdom you know all that is there grow in grace grow in anointing grow in favor with god with people all that is unsaid but it's understood that one also has to uh, live it out that's when the word will be fulfilled just because the word comes you know you're going to be very successful in business does not mean that okay whatever the person does they make bad choices they make terrible choices they don't manage their money well they'll become successful it won't work like that right so when it comes to application uh we must understand that there is a process there is going to be a process we have to live it out even though uh it was not said there is tremendous responsibility at the personal level for an individual to see the fulfillment of the prophetic word okay uh now when it comes to application how do we how do we take the prophetic word forward first is test it out judge the prophetic word if it is correct believe the prophetic word you remember we read one scripture earlier second chronicles 2020 okay it says believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe in his prophets and you shall prosper so this is what god invites us to do each time believe in god believe in the word that he is speaking over our lives so when the prophetic word comes and we are sure what's the first thing we must do believe okay so believe is what we must do and secondly uh obey believing is one thing second is to act on it so now that we are sure we obey the prophetic word but the third one comes which is somewhat uh unexpected for most of us because we feel god said it and uh, therefore there's no problem this has to happen if god spoke something over our lives nothing can stop it right like nothing can stop it but we are now talking about a process as far as uh, applying that word is concerned so there could be there could be a period of waiting before that prophetic word comes to pass which most of us are not ready for we hear a good prophetic word and uh, we are so happy right and we say okay god i know my future is going to be like this and you know i am going to um, experience all these things but then you wait for one year two years five years sometimes some prophetic words take much longer than that right maybe a decade two decades and you're like god what is happening okay but in those moments what should we do tell me what should we do when we are waiting pray okay what else any other thoughts believe pray prepare okay what else huh do the good work okay yeah do the good work just be consistent isn't it be consistent lose don't lose the focus okay okay spiritual warfare right so everything and also this element of spiritual warfare where do we learn this from we learn it from first timothy chapter 1 and verse 8 okay because Paul told Timothy wage a good warfare by the prophecies which have been previously made concerning you so that also teaches us that 
there is going to be an opposition from the enemy god said it so it has to happen that's how we are looking at it right but the enemy will also oppose that prophetic word from being fulfilled so that is where waging a good warfare comes in so there can be a delay uh, uh, you know of course we said you know you prepare for all that god allows time uh, however when it has to do with the enemy hindering us or delaying us in walking into the fulfillment of the prophetic word pray through that prophecy okay so that is like waging warfare so how how does it look something as simple as lord you spoke to me your word says that i am going to whatever that is right i i am going to complete my education i am going to uh, serve the lord like this speak that declare that in prayer over and over again maybe nothing is happening but that's where the whole praying through the prophecy comes in uh, declaring the prophecy comes in it becomes our warfare because we are convinced that god has spoken it will happen and right now there is the opposition of the enemy which is delaying the process okay and uh, there's also something known as question like uh, when we are speaking about this waiting time right yeah like uh, practically like if we see if we look ahead to people for an inspiration there are people who waited for yes. on god's promise and all. these are all fine but uh, my question is on like um, if the time is too long how to eradicate these questions which comes like uh, in our mind because of taking time maybe it's it's not the correct one yeah maybe i yeah. maybe misinterpreted yeah, yeah i might have understood wrong maybe this is not the thing mm. you know, like, i got it practically these things will happen for sure true, we can't true. tell like there, there will be no question in our mind that yeah we, if as a human beings if time is going on means definitely questions will arise right? yes yes see there are two things anand one is faith okay so when we say in god's time in god's time many things like how on the mentoring our pastor said like salvation is today healing is today you know receiving what has been promised by the lord for us is today so there are many things for which we can put our faith to work and we can see them happen immediately so the delay is not from god the delay could be from our end because we are not applying faith so faith is one element so when we are waiting and things are not happening uh to grow in our faith okay what am i missing as far as my faith is concerned and i know it's a struggle but then uh, you go through it right like should i read more of the word should i confess more of the word should i fast should i pray so you go through that whole process of rising up in faith okay that is one thing second thing and also i heard pastor say this very often we need a lot of patience we need a lot of patience because uh you know it it really you really have to be believing and trusting god once you have confirmed you know doubts will come questions will come definitely the enemy will put all that in our minds but uh, we have to make a make a decision i am going to be patient i am doing everything as far as faith is concerned right now i don't know why it's taking so much time sometimes we don't have the answers but in those moments patience right god be patient and uh, i mean ask any of the pastors they'll tell you <laughs> patience because you know you really have to trust god and believe yes he has called me he will do it it's not working the way i imagined it to be but it will happen so that sense of patience we have to develop and battle the doubts that keep coming and actually there is a beautiful uh, passage i think in romans i don't know the exact number of it but when patience has its good work right then character is developed character cannot be developed without endurance without patience so yeah we have to just fight through that waiting period 
see uh, i mean i understood what uh, what and all you are telling yeah. like see uh, if if we have if god promised to us about something uh, and it was taking a long time you know like uh, i i'll come very i'll come to a straight point like what happened is one of her church member came and asked me so she was uh, she was divided uh, from her from her husband it's like 11 12 years ago yeah god promised okay about a relationship she she has been praying from last 11 to 12 years uh, in between she is going and coming back going and coming back it's not working okay so yeah she's i mean as far i know as a like as a sister mm-hmm. um, she is very perfect like mm-hmm. we we know people right so mm-hmm. she she came and asked me like uh, into this is this is what god promised to me and why it's not it's not even one year or two years i've yes. been praying from yes. 11 to 12 years okay 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 so how to answer them like mm-hmm. patience is is should be there yes yeah in this situation yeah, i agree i agree with you see patience is very much there i was talking more in the context of uh, you know maybe ministry work situation but in a situation like this where there's involvement of the will of two individuals right uh, also we may have to engage uh, older folks i mean elders of the church or whoever can counsel them okay uh, so i don't know if that is happening yeah 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 i see so see this is how we would approach it anand i'll just tell you in such a situation where there are two individuals involved and there are many other aspects to it um, we also have to apply wisdom okay so there comes in godly counsel godly counsel can be to begin with spiritual uh, and they can also provide some practical inputs but if it goes beyond we may have to bring in professionals okay so professionals meaning um, you may need like actually like psych- psychology from that uh, area or if it goes worse <laughs> you may need legal counsel right uh, to there are many things mediate is that so that aspect where our effort has to be put in also is something uh, which has to be done yes god said it but then remember i i told earlier there's also the human element so we don't know whether something some step has to be taken if we don't take that step it won't move even though god wants it god never um, keeps time i mean keep keep us waiting it it's by ourselves maybe it may be it is uh, like mm. like uh, on any other perspective we can say like uh, god's correct timing perfect timing yeah when we are talking about this can we say like god is only uh, i mean making us wait for the perfect time because mm. he wanted us to learn things yeah in this perspective we can tell yeah see uh, there is a timing for all things we agree with that but i am talking in the context of you know faith like believing and receiving so the things that have been given through the work of the cross we are very clear he carried our sicknesses he carried our griefs you know by his stripes we are healed so there are many things in the cross the work of the cross which have already been given now those matters there is no waiting involved in that that's what i i'm saying like salvation is now healing is now deliverance is now it's supposed to be like that even in jesus's ministry that's how it was okay now i know we are all growing in faith so it may not happen instantaneously um, but it's all the provisions of the cross which we can believe god for that we can receive from but yes there are matters which are time bound like for which i'm saying right patience uh, without patience character cannot be built up so even god that way uh, provides time in those areas of our lives 
where you know we will we will have to mature but we need to be clear about what are the things that god is ready to give immediately and what he wants us to wait for now for example if i say about healing you know maybe god will give in his own good time if i say things like that it won't be theologically correct so i should not apply the waiting for healing now yes it's true people are still waiting for healing and it's not manifesting that's another story but 2000 years ago it's already provided got it so you we need to distinguish on the matters where we one must wait see take for example apostle paul he was born again and he wanted to do ministry immediately so we read about it he tries to go preach he goes to jerusalem nobody accepts him because they think oh this persecutor is pretending we'll all get into trouble who knows you know it might be one of his plots so he does not get accepted and over time you know god kind of nurtures him and uh, he's a, a more well rounded minister when he finally comes on the scene in uh, acts chapter 11 right so in life there is that process of maturing which we cannot short circuit that's that will take time that cannot be done immediately yeah does that make sense okay so some matters and we have to go through the process and there are many others that are a provision from god okay so we said uh, how to receive from god believe um then obey engage in spiritual warfare for the matters that have a due time or there is a right time for the fulfillment of those promises wait on the lord for those and the prophetic word also needs to be prayed through we see this in the book of uh, daniel daniel prays for the release of the people from babylon because it was prophesied by jeremiah so there are many prophetic words for example today we talk about uh, the tabernacle of david i will rebuild the tabernacle of david the prophetic word is there we as believers can pray and say lord you said you will rebuild we want to see the rebuilding of the tabernacle okay so things like that just because god said it doesn't mean ha huh, automatic there are certain things which god expects us to pray through as well so we must take the initiative yeah and a very nice statement uh, in our notes uh, i'll just read it out it is on page 185 and it says remember that the greater the prophecy and the greater the pl plans of uh, greater the plans that god has for your life the greater will be the preparation that god will take you through so what i said earlier there's no short circuit right the process has to be completed so the greater if we are saying yeah god is calling me to this and that more preparation more preparation okay so heal to that preparation and the areas which were not addressed in the prophetic word are as important as the areas that were addressed in the prophetic word so for example if a business person has a prophetic word that they are going to excel in their business but maybe they are quite bad in managing their money even though it was not said in the prophetic word that you must improve your money management skills it is as important it was missed out okay or let's say a minister of god they are saying you know your ministry will be so blessed but maybe that person is having a lot of trouble in their personal life you know in their marriage in their relationship 
nothing in the prophetic word address the personal life but that is also equally important so we cannot just say god is only interested in my ministry that's why the prophetic word is only about my ministry got it so whatever was not addressed is also equally important now understanding the timing of god in personal prophecy so this is very uh, interesting and as i said earlier a prophetic word could be fulfilled immediately or it can take a couple of years or many years a good example is abraham right abraham god told him you're going to have a son but god didn't tell him when so abraham is waiting 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 25 years so sometimes the prophetic word is for later it's not for now this is going to happen but it may happen a good number of years from now so that's where the element of patience comes in faith and patience um we know for the lord one day uh, a thousand years is like a day okay psalm 90 verse 4 says that so god's way of looking at timing is so very different from us so even though you know we look at scripture like revelation 22 verse 12 where god is speaking about his return right the return of jesus the scripture says behold i come quickly now where is quickly 2000 years think about it then what is quickly for god and god is saying quickly but it's not quickly for us so god's timing is something we have to gauge tune into and according to his timing certain things will happen um uh, and we must trust him for that yeah there is something known as prophetic foreshortening and a good example of prophetic foreshortening is in isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 through 7 this passage we usually read during christmas can someone read it out it's in our notes page 187 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even for a while the seal of the lord of hosts will be performed this okay great thank you so you see there is a prophetic word okay this is the prophecy of isaiah about christ the the jesus the messiah notice in the in what he has said there is a gap of 2000 years because it starts with for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given that is christmas jesus was born and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called so all that carries on but when jesus was born and he died on the cross that didn't happen isn't it yes spiritually we know the government will be upon his shoulders but this is talking about the rule and reign of christ uh you know in in uh, like we are going to see it in its in its wholeness when is that going to happen the second coming of christ so it's actually talking about the birth of christ and just in the next sentence it's talking about the second coming of christ so prophecy works like that even when a prophetic word is released a prophecy may have let's say three parts the lord is uh, uh blessing you 
with uh, a ministry. The Lord is sending in people to help you in the work of the ministry. Uh, the Lord is giving you these resources for the ministry. You see, there are three things, but there can be a small time difference in all the three things. Though we expect everything will happen immediately, not necessary. Because look at this, there's a 2000 year gap, which is what is known as prophetic foreshortening. So even if we receive one sentence, Parts of the sentence can be fulfilled at different times. It can happen. So all this requires us to understand the prophetic word uh, as we apply it. Okay. Another important uh, aspect is disappointments. Okay. Disappointment uh, because someone said something or we felt that God will do this at this time in our life, but it didn't happen. Okay. What happens to the believer? We are discouraged. We are disillusioned that it did not take place. But just be cautious. We've understood now that God has his process, his timeline. And so to gauge his timeline is very important. And when it comes to the release of the prophetic word, simple word of prophecy, we tell all believers, don't get into telling date and time. Okay. Uh, we can just say like, okay, God will do this. Maybe you're, you're feeling it in your spirit that it's September 21st. But hold on. Better not to share the date and time. Maybe uh, we, we generally leave it for those who are in the office of a prophet or those who are in uh, that grace gift of uh, prophecy. But for simple prophecy by believers, we say just omit the time. Don't give anybody timelines. Because huh? even if God is impressing on your heart, uh, I would say it's safer not to. You can just say, uh, believe God, trust God, it will happen. It will happen soon or something and leave it. Uh, I think it's wisdom. <laughs> See, I'll tell you why. Because we don't know in most cases, right, whether people will assess that prophetic word and apply it accurately. Like, it has happened very often that we tell them, uh, you know, you'll get married next January. December comes. January comes. Person is still here. <laughs> and then they're like, Lord God. God said it didn't happen. They are so discouraged. They are so disappointed. Right? And we don't want that. Now, why it didn't happen? There can be a thousand reasons. Maybe that person didn't uh, look. Or, it, there can be many reasons. But they start thinking God is God's word is not true. Prophetic words are not true. So best to avoid timelines. Okay, so we leave it to the people in other ones. So disappointments happen. People get discouraged if they don't see those things come to pass. And we've discussed most other things over here. So there's a note on congregational prophecies. Uh, so if there is a prophetic word for an entire body of believers, the inner witness of the spirit, we uh, ask whether more than one person has the sense that this is from the Lord. If yes, then yeah. So it can't be that, you know, a word is given and then uh, nobody has a witness to that word. I think the last section here says that uh, even prophets make mistakes. So just the way we have in teaching the word of God, you know, sometimes it's possible that uh, teachers make mistakes. 
I remember one teaching. Okay, in that teaching, it was said, uh, "New levels, new devils." That simply means, as we are growing in the Lord, there will be more spiritual warfare. Like you're growing greater in the Lord, more opposition. You're growing greater, more opposition. But <coughs> recently, I have seen people take back that statement. It was it, that teaching came from a, you know like a particular person and a set of people, but nowadays that is not accepted because people have come to the understanding that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So, I mean, which devil is higher than the heavenly places, right? Every devil is below us. Higher level, higher devil, whatever devil is there, the devils or the uh, demonic powers are below the Lord Jesus and the believer who has authority. So that concept doesn't stand as far as scripture is concerned. right? But there was a time when people were teaching that. They were saying, oh, get ready. You'll face more difficulty if you rise up in the ministry. Okay. So the point is, you see, now the teaching, the teacher has changed his stand. Now, will we call that teacher a false teacher? What do you think? Because first they said higher level, higher devil, and now they are saying, no, there's no such thing. We have believer's authority. How would we assess that? Yeah, it could happen. Maybe in the interpretation there was an issue, but now they have come to the realization and corrected their stand. Very similarly, when it comes to people who are prophesying, even someone who has a genuine call of God may make a mistake. So the point is, we should not call them false prophet. False prophet has a completely different definition. You know, somebody who's leading people away from God. Uh, and you, by their fruit, you will understand. They have they are not a real prophet. But a, a usual believer or a normal uh, prophet, just because they make a mistake, for us to say, oh, they are false, they are false, that wouldn't be correct. Okay? So just keep that in mind. So if there are no other questions, we'll stop for today. And uh, some very interesting parts to move on to. Interpretation of dreams is what we will do next. All right, uh, requesting one of us to pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord. Once again, we come to your presence, Lord. And thank you, Father, as what we have discussed about uh, understanding prophetic, Lord Jesus. All things, whatever we discussed, give us knowledge to understand more and more about your word, Father. Thank you for teaching through Nancyna. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We glorify you. your name. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, everyone.